Classics Illustrated Junior. Read by George Petro Pogianakis. Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Once upon a time, there were three bears who lived in a cottage in the woods. A great big father bear, a middle-sized mother bear, and a little tiny baby bear. Each of the bears had a bowl for porridge. There was a great big bowl, a middle-sized bowl, and a little tiny bowl. Each of the bears had a comfortable chair to sit in. There was a great big chair, a middle-sized chair, and a little tiny chair. And each of the bears had a warm bed to sleep in. There was a great big bed, a middle-sized bed, and a little tiny bed. One morning, the three bears sat down to their breakfast of porridge. Ouch, it's too hot. The porridge is too hot. I know what we can do. No. While we're waiting for the porridge to cool, we can go for a walk. That's a fine idea, my dear. Well, look who's taking an early morning stroll. Mr. Bear and his missus and son. A fine family. A fine family indeed. Meanwhile, not far away, another family was rising to start the day. Goldilocks, wake up. Breakfast is ready. Now, where is that child? Who wants breakfast? I think I'll go pick some flowers for Mummy instead. Then she won't be angry with me. Gone again, without eating. Someday, Goldilocks is going to have to learn to obey me. But Goldilocks didn't think she was really being naughty. Mommy's favorite flowers. She'll be happy when she sees these. Soon, Goldilocks forgot all about the flowers. I wonder where this path goes. I've never been in these woods before. Why, here comes little Goldilocks, who lives on Apple Road. She shouldn't be here in these woods. Do you think we ought to tell her, Mother? No, but I think we'd better keep an eye on her. She might get into mischief. By now, Goldilocks didn't think that breakfast was a bad idea after all. She was hungry. Something smells good. It comes from that cute little house. I wonder who lives there. No one answers my knock. Maybe they're asleep. Do you think that's a nice thing for a young lady to do? No, indeed. The door is open and someone must be home. Here's porridge on the table. She shouldn't be going in there. I'm so hungry, I think I could eat all three bowls of porridge. I'll try the great big one first. She's eating Mr. Bear's breakfast. And she wasn't even invited. It's too hot. Would you eat someone's porridge without being asked? Of course not. I don't like porridge. I'll try this middle-sized bowl. Oh no, this is too cold. There isn't much in this little tiny bowl. But this tastes just right. I'm afraid she's finishing it. That was good. Poor little bear. He won't have a bite of breakfast. Now what is she up to? She's going into the parlor. What comfortable looking chairs. I think I'll sit here for a while. This great big one is too high. I'll try the middle-sized chair. No, this isn't so comfortable either. It's much too wide. This little chair is just right. She's too heavy for that little chair. It won't hold her very long. Is she hurt? Not a bit. Where is she going now? I wonder what's upstairs. Oh, I'm sleepy. I walked so far this morning. I think I'll take just a little nap. Hurry! She's about to start again. I'll only sleep a few winks and then I'll go home. Oh, this great big bed is too hard. I'll try the next one. Someone has been eating my porridge and has eaten it all up. 
There's nothing to do but make a new pot of porridge. But who could have been here? I can't imagine, dear. Your brother isn't due to arrive until next week. See how angry they are. And they haven't seen the chairs yet. And they haven't been upstairs yet. Look, Mother. Whoever it is has been in here, too. Someone has been sitting in my chair. Someone has been sitting in my chair. And someone has been sitting in my chair and has broken it all to bits. M maybe I can put it together again. We'll buy you another one, dear. But who would do a thing like this? It must have been a stranger. No one we know would be so bad. I wonder if anything else has been touched. They're going upstairs. Let's look in the bedroom. I hope nothing is wrong in there, too. I hate to think what will happen now. Aha! What's this? Someone has been sleeping in my bed. Pete who? Dear me! Didn't he wake her? No, she's still asleep. The great big voice of Father Bear sounded only like far away. Thunder clouds to Goldilocks, and she slept on. And look at this. Someone has been sleeping in my bed. Mother Bear's sweet voice sounded like the tinkling of distant bells to sleeping Goldilocks. She didn't stir. Now they'll find her. Now they'll find her. Poor Goldilocks. Look! Someone has been sleeping in my bed. And here she is. The high, squeaky voice of the little tiny bear woke Goldilocks at last. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Goldilocks was too frightened to answer. She leaped from the bed and streaked down the stairs. Did you see her jump? She ought to be a squirrel. No little girl was ever in as great a hurry faster than you can say. Breakfast is ready. She was down the path and out of sight. Wow! Did you see her fly? She ought to be a sparrow. She was a pretty little girl, but so naughty. Can we have breakfast now? Well, dear, we may have to wait for the porridge to cool. Goldilocks didn't stop running until she was home. She was so frightened by what had happened, and so ashamed at what she had done, that she cried as she told her mother the story. I'm so sorry, Mother. Of course you are. Dear, and you are going to apologize to the bears. Let me see. Maybe the sparrow can help. Her mother sat right down and wrote a little note. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Bear, my little girl is sorry for what she did, and would like you to come and have breakfast with us. Yours, this truly mother. Please take this to the house of the three bears. A few moments later. Well, isn't that nice? We're going out for breakfast. Soon after, the bears arrived at Goldilocks' house. I'm sorry I upset your house, and I promise never to do it again. At that moment, they were too hungry to talk very much. But it wasn't long before they became the best of friends. The End Classics Illustrated Junior Read by George Petropogianakis Goldilocks and the Three Bears <laughs>